Bismillah, alhamdulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala. It's okay. Look, I don't want you to take it in such, yani, I don't want you to take it in a heavy way, in, you know, in a sense, what's cool, and is that divisive necessarily? It should not be this divisive necessarily. It is like, uh, let's say, in medicine. Are you an allopathic physician or an osteopathic physician? So I would not be offended in a sense, uh, and I would, wouldn't want you to be offended and when people ask for that. Now, when would it be offensive? In the case that they're trying to belittle what you belong to, or saying intrinsically because I belong to the other school, or the other club, or the other tariqah, or the other thing, then I am better. These people who say these things, take them and throw them you nowhere. Know out of your life. Because they're not important, it's insignificant then. That kind of talk is insignificant, right? But if it's asking you about what you practice and whether you think, you know, the way you view the practice of the deen. What I'm saying is this, look. What am I holding now in my hand? A bottle of water. But if I ask you to draw the bottle of water from what you see, you will draw a bottle of water from your vision. And if I ask him, to draw the bottle of water. He would draw a different aspect of the bottle of water. And if I asked Qari Sahib to draw the bottle of water, he would draw a different aspect of the bottle of water. But all, of, all four of you are looking at the bottle of water and imbibing from it. But you do see different things. Now, I want you to think the same thing about these four schools. These four schools are not, not the only four schools we had. We actually had more schools. Al-Bukhari himself had a school. Sufyan had a school, Abu Thawr had a school, al Awza'i had a school, al Tabari had a school, and many more. We had different schools. But what remained documented from a thousand years, so 1400 years ago until now, they were, those four schools were, remained documented in a sense, in a good way up until now. And they're simply the view of everyone of the Quran and the Sunnah, if I may metaphorically put that. So it is a way of deduction or it is a way of trying to understand what did the book and sunnah actually want us to do. It is not in lieu of the book and the sunnah, na'udhu billah. So the schools themselves are not complete and infallible within themselves per se. And complete in an exclusive way. No. This is the only haqq and everything else is batal. A'udhu billah. All right? It's an attempt to understand what the book and the sunnah said. And since yani, Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaah agree that those four schools are righteous in their approach in general, they don't say they're, they're infallible or perfect, but they say that's the best thing we have closest to the sunnah. So it is okay if somebody asks me, look, what, what fiqh do you view this issue in? I say Shafi'i, for example. You may say Hanafi. But again, it would be, when would it be offensive is when you would say, you know, Look, you're, you're, you know, you're Shafi, that's terrible. You know, or you're Hanafi, oh man, you're not going to Jannah. You know, so it, the, these things become, when it becomes a cult, when these schools or whatever it is, whether it's schools of fiqh or school of tasawwuf, whatever it is, when they become a cult, run away and run away as far as you can because that has nothing to do with the deen. The deen is not cult culture. The deen is inclusive, not exclusive. The deen is rahmah lil alameen, not rahmah lil mu'mineen only, or rahmah lil muslimin only, or rahmah only to my, to my jama'ah and my group. La, that's not the deen. The deen is rahmah lil alameen. So, inshallah with that. Do some issue that, for example, Imam Shafi'i radiallahu anhu says, you may, yes. And that's called talfiq according to the fuqaha. Talfiq is permissible, granted, conditionally, that you're not seeking the easiest. In other words, um, you know, I want to do it this way because this way is, I, I want to do zakah, I'm a shafi, but I want to do zakah according to the Hanafi because then I, I deal with diamond business and the Hanafi say there's no zakah on diamond. 
So if your intention is to escape the system, in a sense, then this scholar says that may be sinful. You could, based on the stronger evidence, in other words, you are a Shafi, let's say, but you feel, or you're a Hanafi, so let me bring it to you. And in the Hanafi madhab, if you do qahqaha, if you laugh a bit, not full laugh, slight laugh in the salah, not only your salah is invalidated, but your wudu is invalidated. Wudu. I mean, you're just, <laughs> you did like this and now your wudu is invalid. Not only your salah. So that's contrary, let's say, to Imam Shafi'i wa Ahmad Malik. So you say, okay, they say only the salah is invalidated, not the wudu. The wudu should be wudu in a sense, but that's not according to the Hanafis. So you say, to me, the evidence is clear that the stronger evidence that the wudu is not invalidated, but the salah is, so I'm just going to repeat the salah, not the wudu. So choosing, in a sense, what's strongly evidenced more, uh, rather than what is the easiest, your objective is, how can I get out of practicing the sharia more? That's the problem. Now, other than that, talfiq is permissible and Allah knows best. Talfiq. Talfiq is that you take one from the other. Like, and the point is, look, these madahib and these schools are not there to confuse you, but they're, they're trying to take you to the center. And if you're going, if you're in Little Rock, there are a couple of ways that you can go to downtown Little Rock. And I mean, you can't take all five, six different ways to go to Little Rock because you're going to be spending your time in the middle. So you might as well just learn one way and go learn the other way as well.